the time you called my name so broken night you showed up and patched me up like you do every time i get amnesia i forget that you keep coming around oh ain't no way you ever let me down Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praising your name no matter what comes. Cause I know where I'll be without your mercy. So I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good. God Almighty, you say your love goes on forever, that your mercy never stops. So why would I assume you'd be somebody that you're not? Like the sun in the morning, yeah, gonna be there every day. So what on earth could make you be afraid? Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find Praising your name no matter what comes Cause I know where I'd be without your mercy So I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs Tell me, is he good? He is good Tell me, is he God? He is God He is good God Almighty Praise him in the morning, praise him in the noontime, praise him when the sun goes down. Praise him in the morning, love him in the noontime, love him when the sun goes down. Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praising your name no matter what comes. Cause I know where I'd be without your mercy. So I keep praising your name at the top of my love. Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He is good God Almighty. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Hope Christian Church. Glad you're here with us today. There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of the gospel song. Oh, what you choose it, you never lose it. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my door. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. When the valleys that I wander turn to mountains that I can't climb. Oh, you're with me, you never leave me. Cause there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation.
with us for the first time, we invite you to leave us a message online. Leave a little note on the windowsills. We have some comment cards. We'd love to get to know you, pray with you. We invite you to assume a position of worship that you're most comfortable. But do please, we want you to stand and dance with us too. In a 
Good morning, everyone. Thank you for allowing me to be here today. God above. Mark, where are you? Thank you for the encouragement that you give me. I appreciate it. I do. I'm here to do the communion meditation, but first, uh, there are plates around uh, for offering. There's a, an app. You can go to Hope Christian. Uh, use the app. There are other ways to give to the church, but however you feel, please do that. You might have seen me stuff a piece of paper in my pocket. I had something I was going to read from, but I said, you know what? No. I'm going to read from the word that I used to create that, but the words, as you know, are much better. It's a long piece of scripture. It's from John 6. Starts at uh, verse 25 as we prepare for communion. You can follow along, those of you that have a church app or you have a Bible app or have your Bible with you. Bob Girdwood, you got your Bible with you? I know you do. He's got the paper kind, folks. You remember those? Yeah. Yeah, I got a couple. Beginning at verse 25. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the work God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what sign will you give that we may see it 
and believe you. What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is, it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my, father, my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. At this, the Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I come from heaven, come down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they, they will be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who has come from God. Only he who has seen the Father, very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. Your ancestors ate the man in the wilderness and they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats the bread will live forever. The bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while teaching at the synagogue in Capernaum. On hearing this, many of his disciples said, This is hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The word I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. I know that scripture was long, but I, I urge you to dwell on that this week, to, to do your own thinking on this scripture. It's powerful. It's, as you know, it's meaningful. And we take the small emblem of juice, his blood, and bread, his body, and we take this together. Let's pray. Lord, we humbly come before you. We are so grateful for your sacrifice. This small task of taking your body and your blood is but an easy thing to do. But Lord, we pray that your sacrifice for us will not go unnoticed by the rest of the world and that we can be encouragers 
And we too, like your father, be enablers. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Good morning. Glad to have those of you who are joining us here in person, here in us, uh, with us. And for those of you who are joining us online, we're glad that you are choosing to join us as well. Uh, it's an honor to be able to share with you this morning and, and be in here, hang out for a little bit. I just want to give a quick reminder, uh, holtchristian.org is the place where you can find uh, any information that you need. It's a place where you can send prayer requests. It's a place where you can see some maybe a sermon that you want to go back and watch. Uh, share with uh, some friends. Also a place where you can do any of your giving. Uh, you can just click on there. It will tell you all the different ways that you can give, whether you want to give with a, with a check or with cash or uh, online. There's, there's various different ways for you to do that. So I encourage you to, to do so. And here's why. Uh, it, it's not because we want to just continue having a building and lights and those things. Uh, it, there really is encouragement that happens from us Giving and some of it is is the encouragement that we receive as uh, or that as givers uh, that knowing that we are partaking uh, and participating and partnering with something that is bigger than us even bigger than us as our local congregation of Holt Christian Church uh, through ministry partners that that we support and uh, events that happen and also having a place where we can come and share together uh, invite friends to come and hopefully uh, be connected with Jesus. Uh, but it, just a reminder as well that every dollar that we give goes to everything that we do here. So every dollar you give helps to support CMY and Great Lakes Christian College and uh, Rock Lake Christian Assembly. It goes to, to getting supplies for, for our children and, and, of course, keeping lights on for us. And so I'd encourage you to continue doing so. Uh, I appreciate everything that you've done so far, uh, and I look forward to what God is doing. Uh, some of the other things that, that your dollars may go to uh, happen with some of these announcements that are coming up, right? So, uh, wow, look at those things go around and around. Uh, <laughs> they, they, uh, there's a ladies retreat that's going to be happening. You can find information uh, on Rock Lake Christian Assembly. Maybe that thing got put on the, the flip it uh, thing. I think if you hit the green timer at the top, it'll stop doing that. Uh, Five seconds each one. This is like I'm at the Grammys or something, and they're pushing me off the stage. <laughs> Holy cow, right? That, that's uh, amazing. Uh, but Rock Lake Christian Assembly, there's a, a ladies' retreat. There's that information on there. If you can operate your phone in five seconds or less, you might be able to see it. We'll just let it keep going. Uh, you can walk out the door doors here. Um, there's uh, an, uh, an announcement wall that will have that on there as well. And so encourage you to, to be partaking in that. I think there's also a, a, a ladies retreat uh, that's happening. I don't think there is a ladies retreat that's happening at Great Lakes Christian College. Uh, and so if we can find that slide, maybe get, we'll do that one for, there we go. Uh, right there. <laughs> I'm getting dizzy, right? right. <laughs> Let me just tell you this. God's Girls that meets usually on the third Saturday. Third Saturday, Glenna, is that when you guys meet? Uh, they are not meeting next month. Are you meeting this month? Or? No. No, we're going to meet on the 26th. Women's celebration on the 26th. Okay, so Women's Celebration on the 26th. Here's the deal, though, is that God's Girls are getting tables that, so that you all can sit together. If you were planning on going and maybe you don't participate in God's Girls, Join them and have some friends that you can sit with. Um, if you are a part of God's Girls and you're planning on going, make sure that you join them. If you didn't know, do it anyways. It'll be a good time, I'm sure. Um, but today is the deadline. So you have to let Glenna know today if you're going to come right? So uh, and be a part of that. So Glenna, go ahead and raise your hand so that we all can see you. Let her know if you're at home and you are planning on going and you want to join with, that, with, the, with the group of women from Holt Christian Church, uh, just send us a message, either right there on Facebook or YouTube or uh, uh, office at holtchristian.org or on our website um, in the Contact Us button. So that, that's all going to be happening. Here's the one that we were skipping through really, really fast. Uh, Wednesday, we're going to begin a, a, 
I don't know, it might be a large group, it might be a small group, but we're going to begin a study here uh, just asking that question, how's your journey with Jesus? And we're going to look at the life of Christ. We're going to be gathering together at 6.30 on Wednesdays. It's open to everybody, uh, but especially those of us who, who maybe we don't have a small group that we're participating in uh, with right now. It's uh, eight weeks, all right, so maybe it, it might be a good way for you to get your feet wet. Um, I know sometimes joining a small group and showing up at somebody's house is a little bit intimidating for some of us, right? That's a scary concept. And so this is a way for you maybe get your feet wet, meet some other people, and maybe say, hey, the next time there's a small group coming around, I want to make sure that I'm a part of that as well. And so uh, come do that. It's going to be a great study. I'm sure that there will be things happening after that as well. But I, it'll be a good time. If you are planning on coming here, all right? And so this is, uh, it, it's not necessary, but if you are planning on coming uh, if, if you're familiar with The Chosen, if you don't know what that is, we'll set up a link on our website on how you can get to there. If you could watch the first episode before you show up, um, it will really impact the discussion and help you. It, it is a great take on the life of Christ. Um, and so we're going to be using some clips from that. We'll be talking about that, using that as our springboard for our discussion. And so, again, I encourage you to do that. Uh, and again, all of these things will be on our, our they won't be. They are on our website at wholechristian.org. I encourage you to be checking that out and, and be looking at that. It, 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 like I said, offering is just a small part of you participating in all every single one of these things. Actually, there is one more. April 27th, we're going to be at Edrew Skate Rink. And so that's going to be uh, our local impact team, an event that we're putting on. We're paying 50% of uh, all admissions that, that morning. Um, it'll be from 10 a.m. till noon. And uh, when things like this happen, sometimes we might think, hey, this isn't for me. This is for all of us. Right? Even if you're not going to put on a pair of skates and do disco fever around there. I don't know if they still do disco fever at the roller skating rink or not. But um, whatever it is that they do, it will be a good time, especially because it gives us an opportunity, number one, to kind of hang out at a place where we can all be together and show and be that city on a hill where others can look at and go, hey, who's that group? Uh, that's interesting. Number two, it's a time for us to be able to, out of the overflow of the blessings that God has given to us, be a blessing to our neighbors, our community, our family, our friends. And so, again, we're paying 50%. I do want to say this. If you think that that's a hindrance to you, to showing up, or if somebody says, I would go, but that's I don't even know what, how much it costs to go roller skating, but it's still going to be too much of a burden from me. Let us know. We'll make sure that that, that, that 50% becomes a different number that makes it appealing to them. Sound good? So show up there. Uh, and again, all of that is possible because of your donations that, that you give that uh, enables us to, to do those things together. And it's a, it, it is certainly fun. I don't know what's going on with my iPad today, but you're going to have to deal with me. Keep looking at it. It keeps shutting off, and I don't know how to get it to stop. It's stuck on the flip button. That button doesn't work that way on mine. Thank you, though. That's, I already tried that. <laughs> it, is, it updated overnight, and now I don't know how to work. You know what? At one time, I used to make fun of my parents because their VCRs would flash on zeros. And I was like, how could you be so dumb to not know how to operate the technology that's in your house? And then about five years ago, everything just passed me by, and... I've become, the, I've become my parents with the VCR flipping on zeros. Maybe my kids will help me or they'll just look at me the same way I looked at my parents with no hope. Uh, but we're going to pray. So I encourage you, if you have any prayer requests or praises, put them onto your, your chat box there online, uh, Facebook or YouTube, or send them to wholechristian.org, whether you're in this room or out. You can do, use any of those methods. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to have this opportunity together. And Lord, there's a lot of things that are going to be happening uh, here at Holt Christian Church, uh, throughout our community that we get to be a part of. And Lord, I, I just want to thank you uh, for showing that, that life with you is always better. It's always better. And they got the, the, there's freedom and there's joy and there's comfort and there's support when we truly become a part of your kingdom in a way that allows us to experience the victory that only comes from you. And so, Lord, for those who, who need it right now and are lifting up prayer requests, uh, Father, I pray that you work in a way that only you can. That, that your goodness and your glory is seen by all. 
because you could do things that we could never accomplish on our own. God, I pray that you continue to lift us up, that you keep us encouraged, that you keep us moving on. And if we think that we're at the pinnacle of everything that you could do, God, I pray that you lift our eyes higher so that we can see that you still have something more for us so that we can keep moving and keep sharing your good news with everyone we come in contact with. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, I did want to share one more thing. Um, a, a huge thank you for all of you who came and helped out during our building day yesterday, right? And so um, it, it was amazing to show up here and uh, big tasks were made little because of the hands that helped and pitched in. And so that was an amazing thing for, for everybody who came and did that. And good news, I found the button that I need to push. So you know, it was crazy. I was going dizzy up there with the things, and then I was go going dizzy here. It was, it was an amazing concept for me. Uh, but hey, I, I don't know if you know this about me or not. Maybe you're going to learn a little bit more than you ought to, but I'm kind of a competitive person. Right? There's been a couple of us. Right? So much so that, that I literally, I, st I had to stop playing board games and, and, and doing things for fun, right? People would say, hey, you want to go play touch football outside? And I realized that I wasn't the greatest uh, example of what a follower of Jesus looks like in those moments. And so I just quit. Uh, if you ask me today, you probably have to talk me into playing a game with you that is just for fun. I had this attitude. If we're going to play, I might as well win. Right. So much so that right, those, those games where you throw the strings, a, a Facebook memory came up one time uh, a few weeks ago that the game where the little balls are on a string and you throw them around the, the bars. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Ladder ball. Thank you. Somebody knows more than I do. Uh, I had Alyssa out there till like one o'clock in the morning one day because she kept beating me. <laughs> right. I think I finally won because she quit. Only time I ever lost to my kid. Right? Uh, people would say, hey, let your kids win. I was like, no, I need to let them lose so that they experience what it's like and they can be good losers when it happens later in life. Um, right? uh, we had this. But I had this attitude. If I'm going to participate in something, I want to win. I want to win. I, I, and I think that's how life is sometimes. Right? That we, we get to this point where we're like, hey, if I'm going to do this, I want to win. If I'm going to have a job, I want to have the best job. If I'm going to drive a car, I want to have the best car that I can get. If you and I are stopped at a stoplight, I'm going to get through the intersection before you. Right? There's these things in life that we just want to. We want to beat illnesses. Right? And we speak in that way. But I've noticed that, that there's probably characteristics that equal victory more than just what the score is at the end of the game. I say all of that with as much difficulty as it is for me to actually have that come out of my mouth. Over the last few years, I've transitioned into a coaching role more than a playing role, and I will often tell my players, I said, uh, we worry more. The culture of our club is that we worry more about our character during the game than the conclusion at the end of it. Which means we worry more. We have a victory. And we say things like, you might lose today, but it's not the only time you're going to lose. In the couple years that I've been able to participate in sports, I can tell you that I've won some and I've lost some. And there's many games that I don't remember every single second of the game. But I can remember snippets. I can remember times. And I look at the end and I say, this has been a, a, a joyous Ride. This has been a, a, a great adventure that I've had the opportunity to take a part of, be a part of. And what I'm realizing is that all of life is really just a mirroring of the life that God has always intended for us to have. I think everything that we do could be an example of the life that God promises us uh, through Jesus and his good news. That he says, there's something I have for you. And I think we end up finding ourselves in, in, in broken down moments in life because we just aren't experiencing victory. Is anybody else with me on that? Right? Maybe, maybe it's, it's not as serious as the football game that's happening. 
but it's our health and we wish we could just beat this a little bit better. Or maybe it's our finances that we wish we could do a little bit better in. Maybe it's our relationships that we wish we could do a little bit better in. Maybe it's that guilt that we've been trying to, to, to win over and have a victory over for years and years and years. And no matter how much we try to get away from it, it always seems to creep back up. All of a sudden, we take a step towards something and we're reminded of an excuse of why we can't. We're reminded of a failure that, that happened years ago. We're reminded of a choice that maybe wasn't the best decision that we have ever made. Except one of the good news of the empty tomb of Jesus is that there's this victory that is promised to us. And my hope is that we don't just come saying, hey, if I'm going to play this game of life, I might as well win. My hope is that we step into the arena knowing that at the end, we already have our hand raised. That there's already this promise that, that it's done, it's finished, it's accomplished, and we get all the rewards of the victor. And I think if we walk in that way, there is a tremendous difference in the way that we walk through life. And so over the last few weeks, we, we really started with Easter looking at, at this empty tomb and saying, what, is, what do we gain from this? And the common conception is that we gain this everlasting life. And I would say, absolutely, that's an amazing award. But I realize that for some of us who are still in our 20s and we have 95 years left to live, that that's a long time to wait as far as uh, 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 earthly life, isn't it? Right? Some of you haven't done the math yet. Right? But that's a long time. Sometimes we go through life going, yeah, I can't wait until I get to to walk with Jesus and talk with him face to face. And I say, yes, absolutely true. But what about the meantime? What about the now? What about the here? Because I think the empty tomb isn't just a promise for a there. It's a promise that we get to experience the victory here. That there's good news that Jesus was professing as he walked on this earth, knowing that even in a broken world, he was going to experience death, that he not only got to experience was breaking in for you and I to step into as well. And I'm going to tell you that if the promise of the gospel is good news, it better include victory. I've yet to hear anybody say, hey, good news, we just lost. <laughs> I think Jesus said there's something more. Something more. And so today we're going to look at, I told, I told Todd we were going to look at one passage. I lied to him, and we're going to look at a different one. And so we're going to look at Luke, Luke chapter 24. I think I told you somewhere in Matthew, didn't I, earlier this week? Yeah, forget that. So all your notes, throw them away. That just means he has to pay attention this morning as well. Luke chapter 24. And if you're not familiar with, with the, the 24th chapter of Luke, it's a, a post-resurrection uh, uh, chapter, which means this, that Jesus has resurrected from the grave. The women had gone. They saw the empty tomb. They went back. They reported to the disciples. The disciples had gone up and hid out in their upper room again. On this, Jesus takes, uh, 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 finds himself or shows up and some, some, some people who had had their, their hopes in Jesus that he was going to do something different, that they were going to experience victory in life are walking back home to Emmaus and Jesus shows up on the road with them. And in that time, they, uh, they, they, they eat with Jesus and then they realize that was Jesus after they continue on their journey and he leaves. And so they go back and, and they tell the disciples and they say, hey, Jesus' resurrection is real. For any of us who had doubt, there was a victory in that tomb that did. Something is strange is happening. Something new is happening. There's something that you and I can't explain, but Jesus has appeared to us. He appeared to Simon, right? So at some point, he also appeared to Simon, and he is alive. 
Verse 36 says this. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace to you. All right, so again, we talked about this last week. It seems Jesus keeps showing up, and there's probably this fear, this fright, this, this thinking, oh, no, we're in trouble, and Jesus always gives this assurance, hey, peace to you. It says, but they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands, my feet, that is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. Right? And so this is the, the first thought from the disciples is we're not seeing a resurrected Jesus who actually had victory over death. Right? In their minds, this, still, this isn't possible. Right? This, is, this is you took a Pop Warner football team and you took them to play the NFL team. I used to joke and say they took them to the Detroit Lions and even a team that bad, they, you wouldn't expect that the Pop Warner team would, would win. Some of you are just shooting daggers at me right now for how do I even say it, right? I know. I'm a Denver Broncos fan. It's the same way. I, I think the Broncos would lose to the Pop Warner team today, though, so I won't do that. But you think there's no hope for that Pop Warner team to win? That's the same thoughts here. There's just absolutely no way that, that he actually came back to life. There were doubts in their head, and these doubts evidently were streaming enough into the community that even after the story started to go out that Jesus conquered the grave, they still didn't believe. They still didn't walk around with this victorious attitude of, hey, look, our leader can conquer the grave. They still didn't walk around going, all of the promises that Jesus ever made can come true because he, he rose from the grave. They were still hiding up in the room thinking, the end of this battle, whatever it is, the end of this journey for us is going to be defeat and not victory but Jesus comes and he says here touch my hands touch my side let's hug it's really me it's not a spirit a spirit doesn't do this right we've all watched Casper the ghost when we were little right if you try to slap him it doesn't work right not slap right pat on the back it doesn't work it <coughs> it goes right through he says no we were a victory that day you can touch me. I've got a physical body. I'm not a spirit. Verse 40 says, And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. There's a few things that stick out to me here, right? Number one is I think it's amazing that every time Jesus shows up to people, they eat. I don't know if there's a spiritual significance to that or not, but maybe that's a reason why every time we get, say we need a fellowship, there's food there. I don't know. The second thing that pops out to my mind is what they eat. I, I, I could get, hey, we're having a fish fry. But I don't know why anybody says the creator of heaven and earth is sitting down at my table and we're going to give him broiled fish. I, I don't get that. Uh, a victory meal, that's not it. But he says he took it and ate before them. And here's what I think a lesson that we can learn, that we can grab onto. If you don't hear anything else the rest of the day, it's this. The good news of Jesus often shows up when we think the end is already decided. They thought the end was already decided. Uh, th this is it for us. Uh, we're not going to be able to walk back out into the streets. When we go home, our family is going to ridicule us. Uh, we might get arrested before we ever get there. We might not even make it out of Jerusalem without, ourself, with, without uh, being crucified ourselves. They thought the end was already decided. And what I find amazing about this, this empty tomb is as we look at every single moment that happens, whether it's women showing up and seeing an empty tomb, they went there walking thinking the end was already decided. Whether it was Peter and John who race out to the empty tomb, they thought the end was already decided. If it's disciples who are walking back home to Emmaus, they think the end is already decided. And if you notice that that's when Jesus shows up. I think there's good news in that, that whenever we think that we're defeated, when we have no more moves, when we can't do anything else, we have a creator who says, oh, hold on just a moment. We've got one more sub to make. 
We've got one more player that hasn't stepped on the field yet. We've got one more trick up our sleeve. And the greatest news of all is it's the one thing that's always been constant with God. You see, we forgot about it, but he never did. And we've battled on our own. We tried to do things that would never be possible. And when we thought that the end was for certain, Jesus showed up. And what I love about this and the hope that it gives me is that the good news means that Jesus isn't going to wait until I'm done on this earthly earth, on this broken earth. He's going to show up before then. He's not going to wait until I'm done with this earthly tent that Paul calls my body. He's going to show up before then. He's going to show up. And I think that's the good news of Jesus that some of us need to hear today is that the empty tomb is a symbol of victory. No matter how beat up we are, no matter how lost we feel, no matter how broken we look, he's going to continue to show up. Verse 44 says, then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms had to be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. <coughs> and these, are, these are guys who Jesus spent three years with before here. And he talked to them a lot. He, with Dave, right, with the scripture that Dave shared. Uh, it's as if he would speak and they wouldn't believe. He would give promises and they would say, yeah, we're with you, Jesus. But they didn't really fully con uh, say, yeah, I get that. Uh, there's going to be hope. He's speaking strange things that are hard to understand. But I think the empty tomb it isn't just this victory overall. It's a, a victory of the, scripture, of the things that Scripture promised. It is the victory scripture promised. The, all those things that, that Jesus spoke of and that he illustrated. And when we look at his life, what we begin to see are little victories for people. Not after. Not after they died. But while they were walking on this earth. It's fishermen who thought, I could never do any better in life than being a fisherman. He says, come follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. I'm going to change your status in your community uh, from somebody who has to sit and be taught to somebody who will teach. I'm going to change your status. Uh, whether it was tax collectors who, who had been pushed aside and who had, who had really become traitors to their own families and their community. Jesus says, I'm bringing you back in. You used to have to sit up in a tree and hide. You, you come and be right in the middle of everything that's going on. Uh, whether it was women who, who had entered into relationships that they knew they shouldn't be entering into. And because of that, felt like they were on the outside of society. He says, come in. Come in. To the poor who thought that what they were giving was nothing. Jesus says, they're giving more than all of the rest here. To those of us who couldn't live up to all the legalistic rules that, uh, that their leaders were giving. The promises of Scripture were bringing true in victory with the empty tomb. Because that empty tomb caused them to not just look at the moment, but also to look at the past. And the victory that they could experience in that moment would enable them to walk out of that room and take the next steps in life. Death wasn't coming immediately for them, but victory was. And they weren't going to just taste the hurts and the pains anymore. They were going to be able to walk around with the metal around their neck saying, we've won. And the first thing is realizing that everything that Jesus had said, I'm going to go to the tomb. And like Jonah was in the whale for three days, I'm going to conquer it. You're going to be a part of a different kingdom a kingdom that's not of this world, that they begin experiencing in the book of Acts in an amazing way. <clears throat> I love this passage in Luke because if you know about the Bible, Luke and Acts is actually a two-part book. They should be written, read together. 
And while this seems like the end or the conclusion, the, the pinnacle of, of this journey of the life of Jesus, sometimes maybe even seen as an insignificant moment in this passage particularly, this is actually one of those pinnacle moments of, of the story. This is the time where Jesus says, we've won a victory, and now because of this victory, you get to go on and continue this message. There is good news of victory that's not going to be only held for you. It's going to be held for the other nations, which, by the way, was what the prophecies in the Old Testament said that Jesus was going to do. He would herald in a new kingdom, that there would be people from all nations marching up the steps of the temple, singing praises to God and giving him glory. All nations were going to be coming to him. And this wasn't just a promise that Jesus made up as he walked on this earth. It was a promise that the Old Testament prophets spoke as a message from God to his people. You may be down, but you're not out. You may be broken, but you can be repaired. <laughs> you may, may have lost a battle. But the war's already won. He continued on. He said, Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, This is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. <coughs> you see, the empty tomb wasn't just a promise, a uh, uh, victory proving the promises of scripture from before were going to come true. The empty tomb is the victory of Jesus himself. This, this mission that he was on, right? That I've come to seek and save the lost sheep of Israel. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to rescue them from the, the kingdoms that, that have authority over them today and show them that there's something new. And how do you have authority to proclaim yourself the king of a broken world? Well, you defeat it. You, you take away any power that it has. The power of this broken world is death. I, I don't know if you understand that or not. The power of this world is death. That's why so many of us hold on to it so hard, so tight. Because we think that loss means the loss of the things of this world. And if the greatest power that this world has to, for, over me is that it can take my life, and Jesus says, let me conquer that, then the, the power is no longer there. This, the weight of the sin that, that might bear us down and, and acts as, as the beginning punches of, of, the, of the battle, Jesus says, I'll take those on my shoulders. I will take that weight. I will carry it on the cross. I will pay the price so that you no longer have to. Those things that, that hurt us, that the world cling, that causes us to cling to this world, Jesus says, I'm taking all of those away. And while those may have sound great and, and caused people to come and follow him, the differences that he said was going to happen often seem too much. I don't know if you know this or not, but in the Gospel of John, Jesus speaks about having to eat the bread of life. And then he says, I'm the bread of life. At that point, Jesus had thousands upon thousands of followers. Why? Because there was this hope that if they would follow him, this victory in this broken world, the struggles that they were experiencing were going to be gone. But then it got too strange. And they began asking, can we really eat a person? Is he really expecting us to eat him? And many deserted him. Many left. Many said, I, I can't continue with this anymore. And they couldn't taste the hope of victory that Jesus says is coming. But the empty tomb begins to be the reminder that if I want to have victory over this broken life, I have to partake in the life of the one who conquers it. Jesus accomplished every single thing. Not only that the prophecy said he was going to do, but what he said he was doing. This continued on. He did it. 
It's Jesus. And so the empty tomb is this, this symbol it's the, the, of Jesus' mission and the victory that he has over it. But then he continues. You see, because good news means that Jesus never leaves us where we're at. And the, the consequences of victory means that we walk out of the place that we are different. I've watched guys who walk into an arena scared. They win a championship and they walk out confident. You ever notice that? Maybe for you, it was when you walked into the, the DMV, or we live in Michigan, Secretary of State. <laughs> and you walked in knowing that they were going to give you a test about signs that, let's just be honest, you never saw in your life, and you'll probably never see or pay attention to while you're driving. And they ask you, what does this sign mean? And the, the chill in your, on your spine was that you were going to get it wrong. And if you got it wrong, meant that you didn't get to drive to lunch next week uh, when you showed up to school. And you would have to go through that embarrassment where, because you told everybody you knew that you were going to take your test. Right, don't we? Everybody. Next week, I get to drive. We start saying that when we're 12. Right, <laughs> count down the days. But we walk in there with this fear trepidation as if man if i don't and we know all the things that will happen if we don't pass that test but then when you do how do you walk out with all the confidence in the world in fact you probably jumped right into that car took off driving in the most dangerous way that you ever could because for the first time you didn't have your parents sitting right next to you <laughs> two hands became one finger on the steering wheel a knee, a knee. There's a green car out there if you ever see it on the road. <laughs> right? You're all of a sudden, you used to be the last one to go at the red light. Now you're the first. Right? All, you live differently. An empty tomb is permission for us to live differently, to walk out differently, to walk out with confidence, not with the fear and trepidation that so many of us have because we know how dangerous a broken world is. Verse 48 of Luke 24 says, you are witnesses of these things. This is Jesus saying, you are witnesses of these things. Not just of the empty tomb, but all that led up to this moment. You're witnesses of scriptures being fulfilled. You're witnesses of me telling you what was going to happen and then it happening. And now you're witnesses of a resurrected body. Not a spirit. Not a ghost. A resurrected body. Somebody who has conquered death. Who has gone through. Taken on the weight of sin. Paid the price. Not just in a spiritual way, but in a physical way. Paid the price. And one, you are witnesses to this. You participate in this. Right? Paul says this to the Roman church. You, are, you participate with Jesus in his death, burial, and resurrection. What he also could say is you are victors. He says this. He says you're more than conquerors. You're champions. You've already won. So the question is, do we walk out of the room? Do we walk out of here? Do you and I walk out of here as champions of the good news of Jesus? guilt-free, knowing that we don't have to fight battles in the same way that everybody else fights, knowing that we don't have to hold on to the things of this broken world because, well, they're not going to save us, and knowing that we don't have to walk scared of, of something that no longer has power over us. I know you realize that we're witnesses of these things. Verse 49 says, And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Listen, the empty tomb is an invitation for us to join the victory. It's not an invitation for us to join the fight. It's not an invitation for us to, to, to begin a battle. It's an invitation for us to walk up, put the, the, the trophy, the, the, the medal around our neck, and walk out the door. It says, you already won. You've seen these things. They've happened. And now you get to be a part of it. Empty, empty tomb is an invitation for you to join the victory. And what does that look like? Well, it, maybe it looks like me no longer thinking of myself more highly than I ought to. It gives me freedom to look at somebody and share grace with them. And never mind the consequences of what happens if I do. You ever wonder... 
man, I'd really like to give that guy a ride home, but what would the other friends at church think if they saw me riding with him? They know all the things he's done. Would they think that I'm doing these things as well? And those things can be anything. The victory of Jesus, the empty tomb says, give him a ride. You don't have to worry about what other people think of you. You have to worry about the fact that God says, if you are mine, you participate in the victory. And there's nothing there that can hurt you anymore. It does, though, doesn't it? And I think the reason it does is because we haven't put on the medal yet. We're worried about the guilt and the pain. What will they think if they knew the things I did 30, 40, 50 years ago? What would they do if they knew the things I did last week? So we hide. What will happen if we don't get the right political party in place? What will happen if we don't hold on to these things? What will happen if... And we live our lives fighting battles that we are never intended to fight. You ever notice how many of those arguments over political things that are going to change again anyways, end up destroying families? It gives me freedom to cross over the tracks and talk to people that, well, maybe they have a bad impression of who I am. And it might be dangerous for me to go talk to them, but what would happen if all of us just began crossing the tracks into places that we weren't supposed to be? Loving people that we're not supposed to love. Turning the other cheek when we feel that we've been done wrong by. Do we live as if we're champions? Or do we live as if we're still losing the fight and have to get one up on somebody else? A few years ago, I had to stop playing games for fun. I'd go to family functions, and they'd break out the board game, and they'd say, Conrad, do you want to play? And I'm like, nope, I'm good right here. I'll take a nap on the lazy boy <laughs> for one reason. I was still in a fight. I was wanting to get on top. I was wanting to win. I, I was wanting to myself be declared the victor, forgetting, forgetting that I already said yes to the victory. Jesus' a victory extends to, there's an invitation that extends to you and to me. And this isn't a question just for those of us who have not yet been washed in the waters of baptism. It's an invitation for all of us. Are you going to join? Are you going to join in the victory? What does it look like? Well, it looks like turning the other cheek. It looks like when somebody forces you to go one mile, you go two. It, it looks like feeding the hungry and clothing the poor. It, 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 it looks like crossing boundaries that people say you're not supposed to cross. It, it looks like letting go of guilt and pain that, that I should have let go a long time ago. It, it looks like stepping out and sharing the good news with people no matter what the response from them would be. It means that I get to live different. Now, first step, of course, is baptism, where I get to share in the death, burial, resurrection, where I get to be more than a conqueror, where I get to be a champion with Jesus. But I think the greatest tragedy is all of us who have been washed in the waters of baptism and are still fighting a fight and living a life like we're, like we're still fighting the fight. Jesus' empty tomb is an invitation for you and I to grab onto the victory. Are you going to join him? I promise you, if you say yes, and you do, right, there's much more than just saying yes, and you do, you begin letting go of things that, that maybe you should have let go of before. You, you, you begin living and acting towards others the way that Jesus asked us to live and act towards them. That the good news of Jesus, that kingdom of God, those blessings will, yes, of course, be waiting for us in the eternity where everything, all the brokenness that we experience here on this earth, illness, fights, people wrongdoing us, where that will all be gone, will be there waiting for you. But it won't have this thing and the impact on us here in the now either. And because of that, it changes us. 
Not just there, but here as well. Are you going to join? Heavenly Father, God, I thank you. I thank you for the transforming power of Jesus. That transforms every one of us, every single one of us who have fallen short. Every single one of us who have sinned against you. Every single one of us who who are struggling and battling. Lord, I thank you for the transforming power. That changes our hearts, that changes our minds, that changes our souls. That changes us into victors. Lord, my prayer then is that we walk, we talk, and we act as if we participate in the same victory that presented us an empty tomb. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. How can I say thanks for the things that you've done for me?
Go have a victory today.